This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Everyone's here is super smiling. This message of unconditional love. Boys in the Air Force, super smiling. Here to save the day. Kindness is the way. We begin now. Hi, everybody. We're on a super smiley adventure where we know that animals are healers and teachers and that they will always lead us on grand adventures. All we have to do is be open to what they have to say and where they want to lead. I'm Megan Blake, dog trainer, actor, and the pet lifestyle coach. On our show, you get pet information, but even better, inspiration and integration of all things you can use for your life with your pet. Our show is inspired by and named after my handsome shelter dog, Super Smiley, who led me on a lifetime of adventures. And I know his beautiful spirit is with me every day right now. And Smiley had a true calling, a handsome shelter mutt. He inspired the world's first kindness program, Teaching Kids Kindness Through Pets, the Super Smiley Project. We traveled the country speaking to thousands of kids about the lessons pets can teach us. Two songs were inspired by him, and he was a film and television actor and a therapy dog with deep missions. And today, our very, very esteemed guest seems to me to be on a life mission of superhero fierceness. Her name in Latin even means Queen King. She's an Academy Award winner, a four-time Emmy winner, a Golden Globe winner, and four-time nominee. Time Magazine named her one of the 100 most influential people in the world. I'm so honored to welcome Regina King. Welcome, Regina. Hey, Megan. How are you? I'm good. And you just look so gorgeous, Regina. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Well, thank you. What people don't know is that we didn't plan it, but we are literally matching. We have on the same (laughs) exact color. (laughs) <laughs> and we have a little V-neck situation going on. Both of us. <laughs> and I'm honored about that, Regina, because my gosh, whenever you show up any place, you are just absolutely stunning. Oh, and Regina, you. yes, we could talk about your life and accomplishments and your love of pets for a very long time, but we have a, I'm very respectful of your time. So let's just start with that Academy Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So at last count, what I found is that you've won over 59 entertainment industry awards with 107 nominations, but the Academy Award is way up there. Could you share with us what it was like to actually win that award and what it meant to you? You know, I guess, you know, awards are really exciting. And as you said, in in film, the Academy is considered the award that is the of the highest regard. And I think for me, it just was the opportunity to let the world know, because you're kind of on a world stage at that point, just that I'm not here by chance, that I'm here because everything that happened in my life prior to that moment. And so to have my mother there, who is so much a part of that, and to be there as part of a project that is adaptation from one of our greatest writers of all time, whose books have always been on the bookshelves in my home, in my childhood home, and mostly everyone that I know, black, white, or whatever, has been uh, touched by James Baldwin's work. It was just a moment that's indescribable because it was one that I guess has been in the making for my forever. <laughs> I loved in your acceptance speech, you said, I'm an example of what happens when someone pours their love and support into them. Oh my gosh. I think that's sort of what you're saying. Could you elaborate on that just a little bit, please? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It goes beyond just the love and support that my mother has poured into me. It's all of my family. It's all of the people that I've worked with in the past and present. I am definitely a a product of that. And when you look at the film, If Bill Street Can Talk and James Baldwin's story, Fani and Tish were played so wonderfully by Kiki Lane and Stephen, but they are an example of love being poured into them. And so to be someone who has actually knows what that feels like from an experiential place and to represent that in a make-believe, if you will, world, that line, that connection was not um, lost on me. 
Yes. I think what you just said to me, this is the way it struck me is it's like paying it forward, paying it forward, being grateful, humble, being fabulous, but paying it forward. I yeah. love that. And if anything could be more outstanding than the Academy Award, right after winning, Regina, you directed your debut feature film to three Oscar nominations with Directors Guild Award, Golden Globe, Critics' Choice Movie Awards nominations for Best Director, One Night in Miami. Could you tell us a little bit about that? We're so proud of you. Thank you. You know, I feel like it's something that I've been working towards from the moment that I said out loud that I wanted to be a director. I, I love being an actor. I will always be a thespian. And this was a story that gave me the opportunity to obviously show that all of the work and studying I've been doing as a director thus far gave me the opportunity to bring it to the big screen but gave me the opportunity to tell Kim Powers' story. He's the, the writer of One Night in Miami and show the men that I know and love in my life, my son, my father, my uncle, my dear friends, the way I see them as just mm. loving human beings. Unfortunately, in cinema and in television, we don't get to see our men like that. We don't get to see our men often as complex, intricate beings that actually have emotions, that actually have fears. But we see those four men specifically as like gods almost, just mm -hmm. like they're so iconic, but they were men first and allowing the space to see them in all their grace, with all their grace was just a delicious gift for me. I love that, Regina. And you, I want to say, are a delicious gift to the world. And the way you describe the characters there, I see the words layered, multidimensional, just all of that. And I want everyone, oh my gosh, Regina, we see you on television, movies, commercials, magazine covers. So I just want to quickly just go through for our audience. You have been on iconic TV series like The Big Bang Theory. You hosted Saturday Night Live. You've been in Academy Award winning films like Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise, Ray starring Jamie Foxx, too. Two beloved, cute, fabulous films like Legally Blonde 2 and Miss Congeniality, Armed and Fabulous. But Regina, it seems to me that no matter the genre, this goes back to what you were just talking about, or the medium, your characters are always super strong. They know what they want, but they're still real and human. Can you tell us a little bit about your through line with your characters, this love you have in portraying this massive body of work? I think it's because that's my experience. I really mm -hmm. don't know women that are not strong, that aren't resilient, that are the backbone of the family or the backbone of the production or the backbone of the business. And that's been my experience. That's all I've ever seen. And that's not just a lens, just when I speak about that's my experience with women, that's my experience with all colors of women. That's the one thing that crosses all color lines just mm -hmm. i don't know subservient women i don't know what that looks like really other than if i've seen it in a film or on tv but my own personal experience it isn't that so i personally don't have a desire to portray that because i don't have a desire to see it and when right. i'm reading a script i read a script as an audience member first before i go back and read it a second time and read it for the mm -hmm. character and I love that you said you don't put, want to portray that because you don't see that. And I, what I hear from you there is that you see the highest value. You see the highest good, Regina, and you portray that. And that's why I keep thanking you for doing this amazing work that you are literally lifting the vibration of the world. I mean that. Oh. The, the world loves you. i got to go here now. Oh. But one of the things that put you totally over the top was your sweet, and our audience especially, your sweet little dog lying in the doggy bed right behind you. <laughs> During the 2021 Golden Globe broadcast, you are in your Louis Vuitton dress. Yes. 40,000 sequins nominated for the best director for your feature film with sweet cornbread, doggy, <laughs> photo bombing in the background. And we want to hear all about cornbread right after this break. Smiley, can you wait? Okay, boy. Hey, friends, 12 million. That's the number of dogs and cats this year alone that will be diagnosed with cancer or another chronic disease. But we can all fight back with a scientifically proven, all-natural, super antioxidant called C60. This incredible, Nobel Prize-winning, vet-approved product 
is now available for our best friends, our pets. Do what hundreds of pet owners have already done. Get your pet on the path to a healthier, happier, and longer life. Pet Life Radio listeners will receive 10% off their first bottle. Go to PetsLoveC60.com to learn more. This is a limited time offer, so go to PetsLoveC60.com today. That's Pets Love, the letter C, the numbers 60.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Everyone here is super smiling. This message of unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with actress, director, Academy Award winner, Regina King and her dog, Cornbread. Oh, but first, I just have to do a quick shout out for our amazing sponsor who gave you a little info during the commercial break about C60, the Nobel Prize winning wonder molecule with over 28,000 published papers on its ingredients that's over 140 times stronger than vitamin C as an antioxidant. So it helps with inflammation, with dis-ease, and it helps us and our dogs live a longer, healthier life. My new German Shepherd pup, Anandita, is on it. I'm on it. And my mini horse, Mini Haha, is on it. And you can try it, too, with our special 10% discount for Super Smiley Adventure listeners. It's at PetsLoveC60.com. Now, Regina, in case anyone missed this precious and probably the first time in television history moment, we have the Golden Globe Awards with Cornbread making his worldwide photobomb television debut. Tell us about that. (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know, Cornbread definitely, you know, he could not have been more unbothered. uh, (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, he's a senior dog and, you know, with senior dogs, he's past that age where you just can be gone from home for a long time and just come back and go take them on a walk and everything's okay. Cornbread is past that point. He'll be 16 Mm -hmm. in a couple of months. And so um, he kind of travels wherever I go. And I find that people discriminate against big dogs. And I find that big dogs are usually better behaved than little dogs. Yes, I agree. (laughs) <laughs> and because people have gotten used to me traveling with him and when I'm go to a hotel because we were in the middle of a and still are a pandemic, you know, a lot of stuff we were doing were at hotels just because you don't want all of that crowd of people, right. you know, camera people and everything in your home. And so because they're used to that, you know, they provide a bed for cornbread. They right. provide his own <laughs> bowls and he's got, you know, a slew of collars. And so there's just that universal love that people have for dogs yeah. that I found to be quite charming to experience that I probably would not have experienced if one, we weren't in the middle of a pandemic and two, if I didn't have a senior dog. But now he has a brother named Earl. Oh, Earl. Yeah. Hey, now I want to talk more about cornbread. I'm jumping all around. There's so much to talk with you about, Regina. But with this extraordinary life you've created, and obviously cornbread is traveling with you, I, for me, know that pets can be amazing little therapists and emotional support units. Does cornbread help you with all your crazy, busy schedule? And your Does he help you at all? I wouldn't say he helps me, but he's just a reminder of yeah. that all of these things aren't as big and as when you talk about schedules and things like that, that the real life things are the things that really matter and that really count. And even if it's just when I'm telling him, because anybody that has a senior dogs, when they get older, they tend to disobey. Like, <laughs> you know, that dog that everyone said, he's so well trained. He's so good. He, he comes, he sits on command, you know. <laughs> now cornbread i'll tell him to come and he just looks at me like really oh that's you know, so funny you're coming to me to pet me another thing about animals is what you just said they just get down to what is real like back to the mm-hmm. award show he was like yeah that's my person she's super pretty and gives me dinner but now i'm just gonna curl up and lie down here right <laughs> right right <laughs> and i've had dogs cats and horses my whole life and i always see them as teachers and healers has cornbread shared anything with you that that has been a little a life lesson even just connecting anything oh just resilient resilience people can't believe that cornbread is the age that he is especially being the breed that he is because he's a shepherd lab akita 
So he's Ooh. really a mix of all of the dogs that have really bad hip problems and mm. and and all of that. And this guy used to scale fences. Yeah, and, yeah, those uh, green. yeah, yeah. And now he um, he still at times thinks he's got it, and you'll <laughs> see him uh, <laughs> jump up on something that he really should not be doing that to oh, his hips. Yeah but he just can't help it. And I guess for me, I look at that is because in dog years, he's like, what is it? Seven times 15. So, so he'd be like about in 500. I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, he's like 105 or something yeah, like that. Exactly. You know? And um, that just, you know, never give up. You oh, know, I never, love that. You know? so, I uh, love that when I was going to ask you if Cornbread could say something here on Pet Life Radio because we have like 10 million listeners who love animals. But I'm going to just pick that, that Cornbread tells everybody, never give up. Is that okay? Yeah, it, it, it is. It is. <laughs> 1,000%. I love that. And Regina, we want to hear about your new projects, including The Harder They Fall. We'll do that right after this break. Smiley, I feel you. Good boy. How many of you have pets? My hand's raised. Now think about how lucky you are to have such a sweet little pet in your life, and that pet is lucky to have you too. But unfortunately, there are countless pets out there that don't have a home to call their own. However, Bob's from Skechers is trying to change that. So we developed Bob's for Dogs and Cats to help pets in need. With every purchase of adorable Bob's footwear or fun, stylish apparel, or even the cutest Bob's pet accessories, Skechers makes a donation to Petco Love to help save shelter pets. And with your help, we've already saved the lives of over 1 million pets and raised over $7 million. So while you're getting style and comfort with features like Skechers' famous memory foam cushioning, you're also helping to save an adorable pet in need and helping another lucky owner be connected with a future best friend and companion because happiness is having a loving pet by your side. Find Bob's at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, select pet co-locations, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio. dot com. Everyone's here is super smiling. His message of unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the force of nature, Regina King. And we we're just talking about Cornbread, her beautiful, beautiful dog. And Regina, you also have gorgeous commercials running too. You've got the Cadillac commercial and the one for Wells Fargo, where I saw you with a little white dog, right? Yes. Yeah. Tell us what it's like working on set with animals. That's not your other dog, is it? Is that your personal dog? Well, the thing is that dog is inspired by um, our new dog. When I was sitting down with Wells Fargo and we were coming up with the messaging and what it would look like, they really wanted to make it so that anyone watching the commercials would not look at it just so much as a celebrity trying to encourage them to consider using this car, but wanted people to really connect to you know me as a human and those things that happen to all of us no matter what your what industry you're in if you're um a pet lover and you've had your pet from a pup growing up you can relate to those i'm sorry you chewed up your shoe experience <laughs> and so uh, i just had gotten earl and kind of shared some of those with them in just they were looking for things about me that people didn't know about. And Earl was the most recent thing. And so they asked me what he looked like and I sent them a picture. So that's how that pup ended up getting that premiere moment. Exactly. And this makes Earl a real superstar because we all know that real superstars have the stand in doing the work, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Regina, one of your new projects, the harder they fall. Oh my gosh. In that trailer, you look like a total badass. And I can say that because you're on the cover of InStyle magazine, the badass issue, right? The cover. Yeah. <laughs> so back to the harder they fall. It's a Western. Everybody rides horses. Can you talk about what that film means to you and also what it was like working with the horses? I guess it, what it means to me is it is a reminder of how much we've been erased. When I say we Black people have been erased from storytelling yeah. that um, depicts real history people fail to educate themselves on 
our existence during that time period, just because all of the films that take place in that time period doesn't show us as people who did run their own towns, relied on the resources that they brought to their towns. And so it's just, I'm really proud that we are able to play people that actually existed. All of the characters we play are real people that existed. And James Samuel, who's the writer, director, and also composer, he created a space, a fictional space, where all of these real life people cross paths. So the audience gets to get introduced to people who really existed, but also they're entertained and probably may go after the end of the film to look some of these people up and hear their stories. You know, every character in this film could have its own movie, its own film, but he brought them all together. And that's exciting and, and fun. And, you know, he's kind of created a, a genre that's never existed until now. It is a Western, but it's a mixture of so many different things. And the music is amazing. I love this. It's called The Harder They Fall, and it's going to be in theaters October 22nd and on Netflix November 3rd. So everybody check that out. And Regina, we just read, I don't know if it was from the Academy or in Variety Today, something, something that they often put out little predictions of who might win the Academy Awards. And your name was in there. Did you see that? Oh, Best wow. Supporting no. actress for that. Yeah, yeah. No, I know that changes. So, you know, everything. But you are just so everybody sees you, Regina. You are oh. amazing. And before your acting, I adore your acting. I've said that a hundred times on the show. To me, all the characters are so true and really hit a chord. I want to say like in Jerry Maguire, he played the wife of football pro played by Cuba Gooding Jr. And you were so passionate. I felt like you were like a coach in the locker room, pregame pep talk, getting him to get his agent to focus and get him the deal that led to everybody knows that super famous film. Show me the money. Show yeah. me the money. Regina, I see you as the star of that scene, even though you weren't in it because you were the woman behind that scene. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I think it brings us back to what we were talking about before, just yeah. how women are just kind of the backbone of everything. And yeah. yes, <laughs> he was his wife, his partner, but his coach, his, you know, cheerleader, his, I feel like even though this wasn't the dialogue, but you got the feeling when you watch Rod and Marcy that, you know, he doesn't make a move without checking in with her. Oh my God. That was you know? very apparent. I yeah. definitely have <laughs> and, and I feel like it's very important for those partnerships to be depicted, you know, because we can name personally how many couples or people in our lives, our own personal lives that have that partnership. And normally when it comes to a relationship, the conflict is what's celebrated or what the light is shined on. But the partnership is not normally what's celebrated. And with Rod and Marcy, it was. It absolutely was. And another iconic scene, well, scene for me, let me say for me, was in The Enemy of the State, you played Will Smith's wife. And Regina, you don't know this, but I've quoted one of your lines from that film over and over and over because to me, it embodied the journey of humans as we try to just get through life. So let me tell you, let me set it up. Will Smith's being gunned down, chased by professional government assassins. He doesn't know what's going on. You as his wife don't know what's going on. He tries to explain it to you and to get you to go away for a little while just to be safe and not get killed. And your reaction is, I just bought those drapes. Do you remember that line? I yeah. have said that so many times because it just, it kind of embodies it puts every single emotion on the planet into one little sentence. And that entered my psyche in a grand way. Regina, how do you know that you are affecting the world that way? That one line, I just bought those drapes. Do you know this? How powerful you are? Well, no, <laughs> no but, but I, what I do feel like in that moment is that it's relatable. It's yes. it, everyone's been there in that space, no matter who you are, <laughs> how you, what gender you identify with, what creed you are, you know and understand that moment, that feeling. Kudos to uh, the writers and Tony Scott, the director, to, that recognize that that is a universal like archetype, it's almost archetypal. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. I've mentioned this before. You have won 59, according to what I saw, 59 entertainment awards and 107 nominations, the most for an African-American performer ever. Time Magazine named you one of the most 100 most influential people in the world. So tell us about your upcoming project, Shirley. Oh my gosh, tell us about that. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, we're, we're in prep now. Shirley Chisholm is someone who uh, some of us know her name and, and some of us know some of the images that are, you know, iconic images, but we don't really know much about what drove her to want to run for presidency in 72. And also are not aware that when her name was read on the floor at the Democratic uh, National Convention, that never happened again until Hillary Clinton. And, wow. and that is, you know, quite fascinating to think that however many years that is, you know, 30, 40 years yeah. before that happened again. And she just, she was a strategist, like a lot of politicians are, but she just was someone that was progressive before progressive was a thing to be. Well, uh, Regina, you will do her proud. There is no one on the planet uh, that could from your her. mouth to God's ears. I yeah, am and, uh, terrified. It is. Go, it, uh, it is it, I got that one. I got that one. And we just have like one more minute with you, Regina. So I just want to mention to everyone all these gorgeous magazine covers that you have: Entertainment Weekly, the Oscar issue, Glamour. It says Woman of the Year, Regina King, Vanity Fair, The Power and Glory of Regina King, In Style. There you go, Badass Woman issue, Variety, Power of Woman. So all these. Oh, Regina King gets her superhero on Marie Claire. So what do you think when you see all these words on um, power, power, glory, power, badass, superhero, which I, I mean, they're fantastic. How does that make you feel? <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess, just, you know, not to like sound like, oh, she's always so humble. I feel grateful that I get to be in a space like when I was a little girl, you know, there was no one like me that really that was on a magazine that mm -hmm. looked like me, you know, so yeah. you know, I'm on these covers at a time that you're seeing an Issa Rae on the covers and a Kerry Washington on the covers. And so now that young girl, that young Regina has mm -hmm. you dream, you dream as a child. That's every child dreams. But sometimes if you don't see it, you don't even know that you can dream it because you've exactly. never seen you have it. to see it. To you, see yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so, you are a force of nature, a gift to the world. Thank you so much for joining us on a super smiley adventure. And we love you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thanks for having me. Wow, what a powerhouse, Regina King. I am so grateful that she stopped by our super smiley adventure. What an amazing powerhouse of a woman. And everybody, feel free to reach out to me at Pet Life Radio or through my website at meganblakeofficial.com or at webeginnow.com. You can find everything I'm doing, my YouTube dog training videos, all social media, and you can learn a lot of super helpful dog training tips on my dog training videos on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Megan Blake. And you can meet with me in person for a dog training session over Zoom. My Zoom classes have been covered by Spectrum News. We've gotten great results all across the country. And if you're looking to improve or keep your dog's health, be sure to check out PetsLoveC60.com. It is awesome. And finally, big shout out and thank you to our super producer, Mark Winter, for our show here and for our fabulous bumper music he composed and performs all about sharing kindness with Super Smiley. And to everybody who loves their pets, thank you all for joining us on a Super Smiley adventure. And remember, wherever you are with your pets, it is an adventure. And we begin now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. 